Hello and welcome to the final edition of Covey's Corner for the Australian Open. Yes, the tournament is now officially done. We have crowned our queen. We have crowned our king just last night. Um, I'm sure you all know who it was. It was Mr. Novak Djokovic. Another final, undefeated in semifinals, undefeated in finals on Rod Laver Arena. This man is an absolute machine. Um, definite uh, comparisons now to Rafa on the Philippe Chatrier court at Roland Garros. So um, we're going to get into it right away. And we're going to start with some slides before I get into a little bit of the match analysis. But to be quite honest, it wasn't uh, quite the epic that the women's final was, but it was um, it had moments of uh, emotion and beauty that we will get into. So um, let's kick it off real quick with from at BBC Sport. He's done it. Novak Djokovic is a 10 time Australian Open champion. Unbelievable. I mean, just just thinking of winning 70 best of five matches makes my head scramble. Um, but this man, not a problem. Look at the roar. Look at the relief. Uh, we will get into a lot more of that. Look at that winner Djokovic and huge uh, bold letters, W-I-N-N-E-R, and absolutely, look at that, all 10 of the trophies that he has won. Amazing accomplishment, um, especially after a tumultuous year um, with so many different issues. Uh, had to deal with some injuries in this one, and he was over uh, overcome. He overcame them um, formidably, and um, we'll get into the kind of the injury issue as well um, right now. Check this out. From the coach of Novak Djokovic, Goran Ivanisevic says 97% of the players would have pulled out of the Australian Open after seeing Novak Djokovic's MRI two days before the event. But he is a different species. There you have it. So that's the coach. And, you know, this man, Goran Ivanisevic, was a tough man as well. So when he calls you, uh, you know, tough and from a different species, then you can pretty much bet that uh, it's the truth. So, and again, uh, attribute this tweet here to Jose Morgado, who's been helpful for all the Cubbies corners. One second as I beverage up, just water though. All right, the reason I need to beverage up is because I'm getting into some match analysis right off the bat. So a uh, little bit, um, you know, we only had uh, one match for each of the last couple of days. So I've been doing the match analysis right off the bat and then we'll end, um, we'll get into some other news and stuff like that. But um, real quick, I'll pop this on the screen for you so you know exactly what we're talking about. Yes, it is the final. It was from Rod Laver Arena, Novak. There you can see the score line there versus Sitsi Pass. So we're going to get right into it. I'm going to use this pen because I like the sound it makes when I do my... All right. So Novak Djokovic versus Sitsi Pass. Here we go. Rod Laver Arena um, for the title. I, I, as you all know, Sitsi Pass is going for his first Grand Slam. Novak going for number 10 in Australia, number 22 overall to tie Nadal. So this is how we go. First set, game one, uh, Novak, sharp hold, uh, wins a game to 15 points for a one, uh, one nothing score line. Um, game two, Sitsi Pass. Saves one break point and a second, and then ace to hold for one all. Game number three, a Novak hold to love, solid ground strokes. He's up two to one. Uh, Sitsi pass. Game number four, tight rallies, uh, gets to 30 40, and then he double faults. Stefano Sitsi pass double faults and gets broken for one three score line. Um, up to this point, Sitsi pass serving only 43%, and he has seven unforced errors. That's in four games two service games, only 43%. So Novak, one of the greatest returners of all time, doing his thing. Now Novak serving at 3-1 in game number five. He's up 30 love. Um, Steph backhand shank for 40 love. Now 40-30, uh, poor drop shot from Steph. Novak holds and consolidates for a 4-1 to one lead. Now he's cruising along. Um, let's see, game six, uh, Sitsi pass. Um yeah, it's a pretty even game. He has a big uh, ace to hold at 2-4, staying within touching distance. Game 7, Novak serving 30-love. Forehand long by Novak for 30-15. Uh, 
Great inside out forehand, uh, wrong footing Sitsi pass for a 40 15 double game point. Uh, and then he has an ace uh, to end it. And there was a really, really odd whiff where <laughs> Sitsi pass backhand and he literally swung fully and completely missed the ball like there was a hole in his racket uh that was kind of interesting so anyway Sitsi pass up 5-2 sorry Novak is up 5-2 on Sitsi pass in the first set game number eight Sitsi pass up 30-15 uh ace out wide for 40-15 another ace so his his aces were pretty they were on but his overall yeah we'll, we'll get into it uh Sitsi pass in the first set was um he was, uh, okay, anyways, we'll get into it. We're going to go down to the final game here. Novak serving at 5-3, okay, uh, for the set here. Um, so I have a, a serve plus one cross-court forehand winner for 15 love. Uh, Since he passed rally ball into the net, 30 love. Now it's 30-15. Uh, great serve out wide comes unreturned. Novak has two set points at 40-15. Only needs one of them unreturned serve. And there you have it in just 37 minutes. We have a 6-3 Novak Djokovic first set. Um, and then we uh, I noted here unforced errors were 11 uh, Sitsi pass and 7 for Novak. Okay. Uh, first set note, Sitsi pass looking like a passenger, not the driver. Novak's as solid as he needs to be, but didn't need to elevate his play and still took the set. All right. So that's what I have there. Now, second set. Uh, game one, Sitsi pass serving. He's up 15 love, uh, gets back, uh, get to 40-15 uh, here, um, and uh, he hits a great backhand winner. Uh, so there you have it, one love there for Sitsi Pass. Now Novak, quick hold to love, one all. Sitsi Pass uh, also holds to love. Now it's two to one, so now these guys are, are uh, serving. Now I have a star here, um, meaning this could be a big, big point in the match. So we have Novak serving now at one, two. He's up 15 love. Um, and then he hits a backhand line uh, long for 15 all. Then Novak loses the next point, 15-30. Now, Novak hits an overhead winner on a nervy point for 30 all. Uh, Novak hits a weak overhead that Sitsi Pass didn't take advantage of. So now it's 40-30. And uh, Novak hits a big unreturned serve. Now we're at 2 all. But this was a big moment. There was a little bit of... Uh, there's a little bit of nerve there um, from Djokovic for the first time. And I felt like Sitsi passed. That was a good moment to pounce. Uh, he didn't have too many moments in this match, but that was one of them. All right. Game number five. We're, we're tied at two here. Uh, Sitsi pass. Um, he goes up 40-30. Uh, double fault at 40-30 for Deuce. Um, but then gets the advantage. Hits an inside out winner and uh, holds for 3-2. Uh, next service game, game six, Novak Djokovic, uh, Sitsi pass, nice drop shot for uh, Love 15. Um, now Novak here at 40-15, another big serve, holds for three all. All right, game number seven, Sitsi pass serving 15 Love on a big uh, backhand winner. Novak return winner gets it to 15 all. Sitsi pass, unforced error for 15-30. And then now this is when uh, Novak had an awkward fall. He didn't like roll his ankle or anything. He just, his footing was a little off and he fell off to the side, ended up not being anything, but you always get worried when a man who's six foot two falls that heavily um, or at all anytime on a court, on a cement court or a hard court, I should say. Um, so now 30 all, 40-30 um, for Novak. Uh, Sitsi Pass has an overhead. Novak gets it back. Um, and then Sitsi Pass volley wide for a deuce. So he, he gets a point there. Um, now, Sitsi Pass gutsy uh, swing volley winner at uh, at um, advantage 40. So Sitsi Pass holds and um, he is pumped. So this is the first time in the in the match where he like wins a point um, and he jumps up and he fist pumps and he kind of screams and you're like, OK, OK, finally, this guy's looking like he's in a, a major final here. Uh, but Novak, here we go. Game number eight at 1530. Net cord bounce uh, to Novak's favor. Gets him to 30 all. And then no, uh, Novak, amazing defense side to side. Wins a point. He had no business winning for 40-30. Um, and then gets the next point. So now we're tied at four all. Now, uh, game number nine in set two. Sitsi pass serving. Uh, he's at 15 love. Ace for 30. Another ace for 40 love. And hold for a 5-4 scoreline there. 
Now, Novak, uh, in game 10, I have first signs of tension uh, as we pick it up at 30-40 down break point and set point. So Novak is serving. He's he's down 4-5 on serve, but uh, we have a break slash set point for Sitsi Pass. And this was potentially the turning point of the match, the, the one that squashed it uh, in the end from the hands of Sitsi Pass. So I have Novak wins a massive 15-shot rally with a cross-court forehand winner uh, to force Deuce. And then, I, and then I wrote in the moment, I said, this point could be a statement. Uh, Sitsi Pass would then hit a backhand long, followed by a forehand wide. Novak gutsy hold for five all. Um, and so each player would hold uh, in the next couple of games, one each, bringing us to a tie break. So Sitsi Pass in the tie break, broken, a mini broken on his first three serves. So he quickly down four to one. Then Novak is mini broken. Um, so that's four two. Um, and then Sitsi Pass, uh, actually mini broken on his next two serves is is uh, Djokovic. So now he goes from 4-1 lead to 4-3. Sitsi Pass finally holds one for four all, but then mini broken again on the very next point. So now Novak again is up five to four. Set now on Novak's racket. He has two serves. He's up uh, five to four, holds both of them, takes the set, seven four, and boom, two sets to love. And you can start to feel the end is kind of near, but not fully. Uh, my notes here in set number two, Sitsi Pass, 17 unforced errors versus Novak's 11. That was a big part of that set. Sitsi Pass plays much better than in the first, but still the, the shakier player in the big moments. Inability to break at set point in game 10 was the turning point. So that's what I had there. All right. Now, set number three. Um, this will be a little bit quicker. So we got game one, Novak uh, quickly down 15 to 40. So he's serving and he's uh, got a couple of break points against him. Saves one break point for 30, 40, but gets broken. So now Sitsi Pass finally with a little bit of pressure on Novak, but it would not last long because Sitsi Pass would also face two break points and would also get broken on the second break point that he faced. So we're tied at one. Now, strong serving from both would get us to a tie break without any more break, uh, break points faced by either player. So we're going to take it to the tie break now. Novak hold for one love. Now Sitsi Pass broken twice in a row again. So he's down three love. Novak holds on his next two. So boom, five love. And it looks like it's a foregone conclusion. Now Sitsi Pass finally gets a couple of holds on his serve. Um, and then gets his first mini break. So three straight points from five love down. Now he's up to five, three. Uh, Novak with one more serve and holds for six, three. Triple championship point. Now the ball is on Sitsi Pass's racket. So it's three, six, and he has two serves. Saves both championship points on his serve. Very gutsy. And now it is six to five Novak with the title on his racket. Novak would hit a short cross-court forehand in the rally on a tight angle that Sitsi Pass couldn't handle, sails it long, game, set, match, Novak Djokovic wins it. So check this out. I have Novak looks to his box, points to his temple, and then points to his heart. It was amazing. You could tell all the emotions of the last year. would. This is the moment where the dam would break, and for the next few minutes, he would be extremely emotional. Um, after after the handshake, he salutes the crowd and he s salutes to the above as he normally does, touches the ground as well as he play pays respect to the court. Uh, then he goes over to his box. Now, check this out. He climbs in. Uh, they help him climb in and he's uh, kind of standing on the ledge and he does this insanely intense cheer, like lifting his hands up, yelling, roaring, like right in front of his family. And it's just a sight to behold. He looks like a lion on the edge of a cliff and it's... Uh, it's, it's beautiful, to be quite honest. It was phenomenal. So, climbs in after a victorious roar, then hugs his family and collapses into the stands, crying almost inconsolably. So, after he hugs everyone, and then he, and then he does like a more intimate hug with his brother and his mom at the same time, and then he just collapses. Literally, he's lying down like, you know, where, where the people would sitting on the, in the stands where their feet would be while they're sitting. He lies down on the actual floor of, of the, of the stands and he's crying for about a minute. His eyes are covered. Um, his family's kind of trying to console him, but they're also letting him let it all out. 
And um, yeah, it was amazing. So what did I write here? I wrote this Australian, uh, this Australian journey culminates as Djokovic releases a year's worth of emotion in one instant. So uh, I also wrote here, you can't help but feel for his reaction. If you followed any of his story over the past 12 months, the raw emotion of it was an experience in itself. Novak is now level with Nadal at 22 grand slams. He's atop the mountain as world number one again. And all of a sudden, things feel right in the world of men's tennis. So after a tumultuous year, a lot of uh, weirdness, you know, the Wimbledon thing with the points and the, you know, the Russian ban, all that stuff. Uh, finally, it just kind of felt like we're, we're, there's something about him being number one and, and being on top again, where you're like, okay, this feels like how things should be. Um, so anyways, that's what I have there. Final notes on the match. I say, you may recall in my pre-match preview, I gave Sitsi Pass the uh, a little bit of an edge on the forehand side, but today he did not have it. Uh, Novak ended up having a stronger day from that wing and honestly was just a little bit better uh, in every aspect of the game. Um, he attacks it. Okay, this is what I love. Now we're getting into a little bit more specifics tactics. What Novak does, everyone thinks, okay, and this happened against Rublev as well. Everyone thinks Novak is he's going to go straight for the backhand of Sitsi Pass because it's the weaker wing. He doesn't actually do that. He punches, he, he's punching these guys and counter punching forehand to forehand, but he does it strategically because. When he's exposing their backhand, he doesn't just expose it off a rally ball. He exposes it by going forehand to forehand, changing direction. And then now they have to hit a backhand while they're on the full run, which is much harder to do when, than when you're set. So I thought it was a brilliant strategy. It's like instead of so instead of attacking the backhand directly, you attack the forehand until you have a chance to make them have a backhand under pressure. And he did that to perfection. Um, and I think that's a strong strategy and he, he implements it. He's really good at, at, at knowing when people are kind of having a lull and he's also manage, good at managing his own lulls, but he's also got this technical ability to say, okay, you would think that the best way is just to pepper their backhand, but no, it's not like that. It's I'm going to make them pepper the forehand until I force them to have a more uncomfortable shot on the backhand, making it way more likely that they'll mess up. So again, brilliant strategy. Absolutely loved it. Heart of a champion, mind of a champion. Novak Djokovic, there you have it, folks. All right. So that is the uh, roundup in terms of our match analysis. Uh, I'm going to check out some comments here. We got Jamie Drummer in the house saying, hey, hello, Jamie. Says Steph was awful in those two tie breaks. Novak was nervy in those two breakers as well. Yeah, definitely. Novak was a little bit more uh, put together, I'd say. Um, uh, Son of Robin Records, a.k.a. Ben, saying Steph needs to learn from this final and grow in the big moments. Uh, speaking of Ben and JG and the whole channel, uh, you may have noticed that we have, again, hit uh, our, tar our target of 50,000 during this tournament. Now we have a target subscription on the YouTube channel of 100,000. We're only halfway there now, so we need your help even more than ever. Also, please, on this video, give it a like, give it a, uh, give us a subscribe, share share the video, comment, all that stuff. We really appreciate it all. Um, and then another uh, stat here from Ben, uh, surprised to see more forehand errors than backhand from Steph. Yeah, I was really, I was not impressed with Steph. If you notice, I haven't really mentioned him too much, and it's because he didn't, play uh, he didn't uh, he didn't have as much an effect on this match i felt like it all it went all novak's way um also afterwards they asked steph um in the press conference like you know how do you think you did and he said you know i think i'm doing great i'm on the right path and i think that's okay because you you don't want to you know beat yourself up all the time but i think you do have to introspectively look and say you know what i wasn't that great i i didn't show up i wasn't there in the first set um, I came out a little bit sluggish. I wasn't sharp. Didn't really own any of that. Maybe he does does that with his team in private, but he didn't do it in public. And it kind of just reminds me of like a politician who loses, but then says, oh, um, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, kind of was a little bit your fault. So anyways, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, we got MotoGP 2021 Covey. Awesome coverage throughout the AO. I just have one question out of all the people how could you predict Fritz to win the AO? Um, okay, I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm going to still own it. Um, 
I chose Fritz because uh, we were asked to each put in a prediction. And I thought a lot of people were going to pick Novak, which was going to be my pick, which is a not a very sexy pick. Um, but that's my reasoning. I kind of was like, I just want to make sure I don't just say the same thing that, you know, the other commentators are going to say. Um, and then Fritz. Yeah, I just kind of was like, all right, let's see if he can do it. Um, but definitely I was more confident with my Sabalenka pick. And of course she won. But that's a pick that I I picked because that's what I really, truly was thinking and uh, was really impressed watching her in the WTA finals in November. And it's something about her her demeanor and her ability to overcome uh, moments um, of double fault and moments of kind of uh, that are going against her it really just impressed me. So uh, that's what I have there. We got Lamberto in the house. Hello, everyone. Hey, Lamberto. He says, what an Australian open. Absolutely. I think the women's final was an epic, well-deserved uh, praise for what it was, uh, which was phenomenal tennis from two women who are classy and um, on the way up on the rise. Um, so, yeah. That's what I think on that sense. I de definitely find that this this final on the men's side wasn't as exciting, but Novak's reaction in the release was almost worth it. Um, like it almost that was like the payoff rather than the actual match. And that's how I kind of see that. So we're going to keep on going. Um, actually, here, let's take uh, one from Sean Power. I mean, Fritz looked more likely than Tommy Paul and co. So not the worst pick. Yeah, I mean. Look, Fritz was actually hot, man. He was going uh, United Cup. I believe he was undefeated. Um, that whole team, they were just on fire. Um, you know, and then he also, he beat Nadal in, in uh, Indian Wells finals. So that gave me a little bit of kind of confidence for him. But yeah, in the end, it wasn't the greatest pick. <laughs> um, so hey, we're going to get back into a couple of uh, tweets now. All mostly regarding Novak. Let's take a look at this one. Now... It says, this is from uh, Wish You Were Here, Joni Baby 77 I'm not necessarily, the, the sentiment of, of the, the tweet is not uh, in the words for me. It's the photo, but I will read it. Novak Djokovic is a hero. Australia, hang your heads in shame for what you did to this man. The world will not forget. I don't necessarily fully agree with that. Um, of course, I don't like the fact that he wasn't there, but I don't think Australia needs to hang their heads in shame. Uh, it's a lovely country. And look at this. This is what I was talking about. So this is when he was laying down like at the foot of the stands, like where his brother and, and, and mother were actually sitting, like laying down at their feet. Um, and look at that. Like he just was letting it all out one whole year, so much drama. Um, and he's gone through so much, played so few tournaments, makes it deep in all of them, just a formidable champion. And I just think this photo like really, really encapsulates a lot of his heart. Um, and what this all means to him. All right, we're going to bust through a couple more here. This from Tennis Sandgren, one of the all-name teams of all time on tennis, saying Nole is downright mythological at this point. Yeah, give him a horn. Um, give him some wings. Um, he's a unicorn, man. This guy is an absolute beast. One second as I have a bevy. Okay, so moving on, we have... From Roger Federer, check this out, at Game to Love at GTL Tennis, uh, Roger Federer reacts on Instagram to Novak Djokovic's historic victory. Check this out. Incredible effort. Again, many congratulations. Uh, and that is, again, from Roger and these guys. I feel like their relationship has really improved a lot since um, since the Labor Cup. And I think... Uh, I think it was great for Novak to be a part of the whole kind of retirement thing. And I really love how he felt uh, like he, he got teared up when he, when he saw Roger and his family kind of get, you know, really teared up. And so anyways, I, th I think that really helped um, that friendship a little bit. Okay. Moving on. John Millman uh, at John Millman tennis from a different planet this week from Novak rods arena, but Novak's court. I love that sentence at Australian open. And speaking of rocket rod labor, this is from him. Congratulations on a 10th Australian Open title, Novak Djokovic. 35, and at the peak of your powers, you've been as relentless as I've seen, seen you these past two weeks. It was a privilege to watch such a superb final against your young rival, Stefano Tsitsipas. Bravo to you both. Um, and also, if you, if you caught my pre-match preview, um, I had a little fun fact. This... Um, 
gap in age. So uh, jo Djokovic 35, Sitsipas is 24. So that 11 year age gap is the largest age gap in a men's final since the open era, 1968. So there you go. A little fun fact there as well. What else we got? The ja this is from Nick Kyrgios at Nick Kyrgios. The jacket with 22 on it is elite energy. Ha ha. I love it. Need more. Okay. So you're going to have a lot of traditionalists um, in the tennis sphere saying, oh, I don't like the fact that he, you know, came, came with this jacket. You know, you know what? I think that mentality in sports um, is dying out. And I hope it is because, you know, every sports team, you know, when they say if uh, like, for example, like my hockey team in Vancouver, if we go to the Stanley Cup finals, it's the, the big trophy and we lose, you know, they print all these things though, as if they had won that, you know, they'll say the champions, you know, 2023, even if they don't win, because they, ha they have to be prepared for that, right, to, to sell their merchandise right away and all that stuff. Um, this is obviously a little different, but I do love the fact that he just believes in himself enough to say, yeah, I will bring this jacket onto a court. Obviously, he's not going to wear it on coming onto the court before the match. But hey, be prepared. If you're a champion, prepare like a champion. I think it's great. I love it. Um, and uh, it's a good conversation, though. And let me know what you think in the, in the, in the, the chat there. You know, I know some people are going to say, oh, it's a little cocky. I, I just think it's, uh, it's just championship energy. And if you don't know what I'm talking about visually, well, here it is. This is, again, from Game to Love at GTL Tennis. Djokovic had the 22 jacket ready, little alligator for Lacoste, Australian Open. And look at that, deuce, deuce, unbelievable. Again, I think that is so cool. Um, yeah, love it, love it, love it. So um, next up, we've got the new top 10 on the ATP side. This from at Jose Morgado. So Djokovic moves up four spots, takes over from teenager Alcaraz. Um, who is now number two in the world. Sitsi Pass, number three. He moves up a spot. Rude down a spot. Number four. Rublev up to number five. Nadal down four spots to number two. Uh, uh, Felix has not moved. He's staying at seven. Fritz up one to number eight. Holger Runa, who I personally really, really wish had played Djokovic instead of Rublev because he's a type of guy who doesn't want Djokovic on the other side of the draw. He's the type of guy who's like, I want to go through this man. As he tried, as he showed us in Paris with his uh, phenomenal performance there, I believe he saved six break points to to win that match uh, against N Novak in a thousand uh, Masters one thousand final. Crazy! Uh, and then of course we got Hubie Hercatch goes up one spot to number ten. There's your top ten now. Um, okay, what else we got? Let's keep it moving. Actually, you know what? Uh, we'll we will keep it moving. But first, let's check out what's going on in the chat. This is the last. Covey's corner of the Australian Open. So I do want to get to as many people as possible here. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Oh, Lamberto says, Ben, love the new Novak sign. Yeah, um, we will be... Uh, actually, the link for that is pinned in our live chat. So um, after this uh, video, have a look, uh, have a listen. It's a great video. It's a great song. It's a full song. It's not just a button. Uh, if you haven't, if you haven't heard it yet, um, yeah, it's great. It actually t tells a little bit of the story as well um, of the last year for Novak. And uh, I think Ben really encapsulates the whole energy of the last year. And it, it's really well done. Um, okay. And, and there we have Ben thanking someone uh, was epic. I believe that is regards to the new song or it might just be in regards to the call of the match or whatever. Uh, okay. So Lamberto saying just raw emotion there from Novak after everything that happened to him in the past 12 months shows how much it means to still be winning titles in his thirties. Yeah. And that's his 10th title after turning 30, which is more than anyone in the history of planet earth um, on the men's side. So there you have it. Um, let's see what else here. Again, MotoGP 2022, uh, 2021 saying at Son of Robin Records, I was listening to the Goat Kovic uh, song on repeat. It was so damn good. Triple fire emoji. Yeah, like I said, it was awesome. And um, another one, uh, I so hope this masterpiece reaches Goat Kovic. He would, uh, he should really listen to such a great masterpiece. And uh, Ben saying, I hope so, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Um um okay so i'm gonna get into the end here a uh, couple more tweets um so this from at tennis tv look at this 
22 to 22. The battle continues. Dot, dot, dot. Goat emoji at us. Uh, hashtag Oz Open. So check it out on the left. We got Idemo Nole. We got Nole with a number one for L. Uh, we got Rafa. We got Rafa the goat Nole. And check this out. The two of them. Let's press that. There you go. You could get a better view of the whole thing. So this could be what um, Paris will look like in May. Um, so let's uh, let's hope that we have an um, epic battle. I mean, how cool would it be if they faced each other off? They faced off with each other in the final over in Paris for 23. That would just be um, finger licking good for any tennis fan. Um, unless, of course, someone like maybe Alcaraz or... Um, Again, Runa or someone else, you know, um, who else? Sitsi Pass, again, really good on clay. He's been to the finals there. So um, that would be cool, although there's a lot of a lot of things that needs to happen before the, that were to take place. Uh, last one here. Um, second last one, actually. Uh, we've got from At Tennis Channel. I just wanted to give some love to the women's doubles. We also gave love to the men's doubles yesterday uh, after the... Um, after the Sabalenka Rabakina match, the the Aussies won, but this time it was the Czechs defeating the Japanese team of Aoyama and Shibahara. So Krachikova and Sinyakova, who have won everything, they've won Euro titles, they've won um, all the majors in doubles. They take it six four six three, the top seed to take home the women's doubles championship. Congratulations to the Czech players! Uh, amazing tournament as always. You can always count on these two to be deep into the. Grand Slam tournaments, well done. Um, and then let's go um, take a look. We'll remove that for one second. Uh, we got Lamberto saying Federer is hanging on to the tail. Oh, uh, in the photo. Actually, I didn't even notice that. That's kind of cool. Um, and then Lamberto saying double so underappreciated, such a tricky and skillful game. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, you know, the angles are different. It is the same game, but it feels like, you know, a different game sometimes. So yeah, very true. Very, very true. All right, y'all. Can you guess who my player of the day was? Um, you get 0 0.1 seconds. Nope. You didn't. Yeah. Didn't get it. Oh, uh, it's this. go uh lamberto saying novak come on of course it was novak it was always novak and it was always gonna be novak amazing amazing tournament uh overcoming adversity through injury a little bit of uh out, off court stuff with his father and i'm glad that that died down really was a bummer for me i mean my father is uh he passed on so um you know if i was novak i would want my father there for sure um yeah, absolutely. Um, it was a little bit of a bummer that he wasn't, but you got to also respect his father for saying, you know, this is your moment. I don't want to, I don't want to take anything away or ruin it. So, and then of course they had a big embrace after as well in, in the locker room area of, you know, of course uh, he's going to celebrate with his family. So in the end, Novak said, you know what, it was a fairy tale ending in the end. And so all is well, that ends well. And that means, uh, this is also ending uh, Covey's Corner for the last 14 straight days. We brought you the roundup of the Australian Open, uh, had so many great conversations with people, had uh, so many fun insights I learned, uh, researched upon, and just had a great time bringing tennis to people. I love tennis, as you all know. I love uh, hanging with the GTL uh, crew. We're um, always just uh, very passionate about it. So, um, yeah. Uh, so again, I just wanted to say one thing in uh, pinned in our live chat is the link for the brand new Novak 22 song that Ben uh, made, I believe, with someone else. Uh, don't want to say the wrong person, but yeah, they uh, they pull, put it together and it's a killer track. Please listen to it. Uh, please like this video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, uh, comment, share, do all that fun stuff. Um, I'm definitely going to 
continue being around. We'll uh, figure out exactly what's the next step. But uh, definitely stay tuned to the channel. See what we have going on. Uh, we appreciate all of your ears, your eyeballs, and your, um, your kind words, your support. A lot of tips as well we receive uh, through Patreon, through just the chat and everything. So um, there you have it. So for the final time from Australian Open 2023, this was day 14 of Covey's Corner. And uh, signing out, I'm Covey. And we'll see you real soon, GTL. Take care. It's Covey's Corner. Give it a like, I said give it a like, leave a little comment, share the video, and hit subscribe. That's right. It's your Check out this other video.